all right uh, welcome everybody for the smooth course uh, especially introduction to procurement and interactomics course so we are going to today do the live session for two dimensional electrophoresis uh, our idea is that you have already finished some learning of this part of the module uh, where you have been already taught about protein extraction separation on the sgs page gel and 2d gel and how to do data analysis followed by now you can proceed for the mass spectrometry based analysis so today we are going to show you the step wise procedure uh, after you have done a good protein extraction and you want to separate proteins utilizing their properties on the molecular weight and isotropic point then how best you can use uh, this 2d gel based platform so i'm having this live session directly from my lab and you can see people you know working around here uh, we are going to show you the instrument and setup involved i'm sure by now you are already familiar with the fundamentals uh, the basic knowledge of you know how to do this particular uh, type of technology but i'm sure to be you know, very beneficial for you to really have a session like this in lab when you can see how some of these instruments look like uh, how people you know really operate these things uh, at, at the experimental level at the researcher level so uh, two dimensional gel electrophoresis as you are already aware uh, move from the tube gel uh, based platforms and then it really got you know significant achievement from the immobilized ph gradient strip ipg strip so i'm going to show you first you know one of this ipg strip uh, 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 this is you know coming from one of the vendors where we have you know different strips available here of different ph gradient so this immobilized ph gradient strip as you are already aware of uh, they can be 4 to 7 they can be 3 to 10 different type of ph can be used and ipg strip can have different length as well right it can be a very small one 7 cm or it can be very large like this one which is the uh, 24 cm so ipg strip you know you can choose as per your experimental requirement uh, it would be ideal to have the longer strip because then you can have better separation so we are going to show you 18 and 24 cm long uh, you know uh, whole setup how you can run large uh, gels which could be better used for the uh, separation and resolution of the proteins on the two region so i have with me here uh, two teaching assistants uh, ts vipin uh, uh, kumar uh, and uh, kanika both of them uh, have been instrumental in handling this course and uh, helping with assignments and the lab sessions so they are here going to show you step wise uh, uh, things in what for doing two direct process so very first thing we are going to show you the uh, rehydration step uh, how to take the protein from the solution form and rehydrate on these ipg strip so you know we'll have the hands on session to show you how to really do that in the tray and uh, what is involved in the doing passive rehydration and active rehydration once you have done rehydration then you are ready for the next step which is separating them in the electric field which is using isoelectric focusing unit and again we have the setup here which let me kind of briefly flash for you so this is the one of the instrument set up we have which is uh, used for doing the isoelectric focusing uh, this is ipg4 instrument we have right probably now you can see it from the top and this is a place where you can uh, insert uh, and you can keep these you know your ipg strip inside the tray uh, this is the tray when where we are going to show you the rehydration the first step uh, and of course these are the uh, you know we have these ipg strips once we have done this particular uh, isoelectric focusing then we are uh, ready to move for the second dimension separation but keep in mind that when you are doing sgs phase gel you are uh, boiling your protein you are denaturing it and you want to make sure that you know now denatured proteins are getting separated in the second dimension based on the molecular weight property the so same concept applies here but we cannot boil the strip so we are going to prepare the strip for better separation in the second dimension so to do that we will be performing the equilibration step the so two steps of equilibration one and two uh, will be shown to you and then we are ready now for the second dimension separation for second dimension we have here uh, the large setup of the uh, this large gels so as you can see these are the much bigger glass plates uh, and we have you know this running unit which you can see the big one uh, it and dark six unit which can uh, take six large gels simultaneously so then we'll be showing you how to uh, run the gel in the large units of doing the second dimension for the two dimensional gel electrophoresis so uh, theoretically you are familiar with it i'm sure it will be exciting for you to watch 
all of these steps, you know, the details of them, how it can be done in the lab settings. Once the run uh, has finished for the you know entire gel, then you have to uh, put the staining solution, which we cannot show right now because you have to wait for a long to you know have the gel stain. Then it has to be de-stained, and then only you can see some sort of visible bands or spots on a given gel. So that is step we are going to show you that how now you are going to scan that image because you got the gel after doing the uh, you know staining and de-staining process. So now you can do the scanning of the image which could be further used for data analysis. So we'll skip the staining and de-staining part, but we'll take you to the scanning procedure. And from scanning, then we'll show you, I will share the screen with you and we'll show you how the you know, scanning parameters are being changed to obtain the right image. And then how best we can analyze the data. So we'll actually show you a live demo of uh, one set of controls and you know, treatment gels uh, to say that you know how best you can uh, look for the alignments, how best you can do cropping, how best you can look at the 3D uh, views of the spots uh, and ensure that with all the statistical parameters, you got the right spot for taking it forward. And this is where you know the 2D modules uh, will be kind of concluded. Uh, then eventually, from this knowledge, then we can build further from the 2D to the DAIS platforms. So that will be the next uh, set of discussion which we'll have. But let me kind of now uh, call Karika and Vipin to, to start the session, starting from the dehydration. Hello students, thank you for being uh, for this live demo. So we'll start with the first step, which is rehydration of the IPD strip. As you can see, this is the IPD strip. The IPG strip usually it is available commercially in a form wherein a plastic coating is present onto the gel side. Otherwise, it may get damaged. So, first step is removal of this plastic film and exposing our gel side. So, you can see this plastic film has been removed, and our IPG strip it has uh, it has information about its length. It has a particular barcode, and then we will do rehydration now. So, in rehydration, what we do is we take the rehydration buffer, which also has a protein of interest. And we add in, in one of the lanes. So, rehydration buffer, you can see it is blue in color. It also has bromophenol blue, which helps us in visualization. It has all cowtropic agents like thiourea, urea, which helps in uh, denaturation of the protein. Now we'll take our strip and we will put it in that lane which has a protein sample. Now as all of you would have guessed, we will put the gel side towards the protein sample. So you can see we play a little with the strip so that it, the protein solution is spreaded uniformly throughout. And then further, then we add mineral oil on this so that to prevent the strip from drying. Because rehydration usually happens for overnight. It happens for around 16 to 18 hours. So to prevent the strip from dry, uh, drying, we will add mineral oil. You can see again mineral oil we are adding on top of the strip. Further, we will close, we'll put the lid, and then this is incubated overnight for 18 hours approximately. In this 18 hours, our strip very nicely it absorbs all the protein sample and is rehydrated fully. So after rehydration, the next step is separation using isoelectric focusing. So we already have a IPG strip which we have rehydrated already. So we will take an IPG strip and we will put it in the isoelectric focusing unit. So basically here you can see how these are the IF, IPG4, these are IF instrument. And here is the, you can see. 
So these are the electrodes. Here you can see that one is positive electrode, another is negative electrode, and these are the IF three. So which I will put on the just on the electrode. Now which we have already one strip which already dehydrated. Now here on the strip you can see. So if you are able to see, these are the like positive end and these are the negative end. So I'll put the positive end towards the positive electrode, and the negative end towards the negative electrode. Here you can see now. So after putting the IVG strip, now we having a wick, basically these wicks. So I'll put on the ends of the IVG strip. So uh, these wicks we are adding because of during the separation, a lot of salt will come out from the strip. Which will get accumulated on the IPG strip. Further, we are adding the two electrodes at both the ends of the IPG strip, which will ensure a proper flow of current. So now, once we put the electrode, then we have to put the oil also. Both the oil and strip strip should not be getting dehydrated. So I'll put the oil. So now, once we put the IPG strip, then like we have to put the protocol. So here you can see on the screen now. So now here you will be able to see the protocol for the isoelectric focusing. So first, now we are applying the low voltage, like we are applying the 200 voltage uh, for. Four hours. So in starting, we are putting low voltage so that, like in in our sample, there will be a lots of salt will be there. So in starting, the salts will start to move and it will start to deposit at the end of the IPG strip. Then slowly we increase the high voltage, like 500 voltage for one hour. So now what happens is that there will be other salts will be there which are not highly charged, so they will start to move and they will deposit at the end. Then slowly we increase the voltage till like thousands for one hour. Then we are increasing 8,000 for four hours. So here we are putting the gradients, not a step. So what happens in gradient? The voltage will slowly, slowly increase from 1,000 to 8,000, and it will take four hours to increase the voltage to 8,000. Once the voltage will be reached till 8,000, then we are putting 8,000 voltage for 56 volt hour. Means once 56 volt hour will be complete, then it will be moved on another step. So now we put this protocol. For the isoelectric focusing, and then it will takes around 18 to 19 hours to complete the one IF. Basically, it depend on the IPG strip. Also, if we having a lower length of IPG strip like seven centimeter, it takes less time. It will be around 15 to 16 hours. Now, if you are doing the IF of 18 centimeter strip or 24 centimeter, it will take around 19 to 20 hours. Now, once we it will be done, how the IF run will be looks. So here you can see on the screen. So this is a blue line which is we already set the voltage and red line which is followed by the instrument or the IPG strip. If it is going very well and exactly follow the voltage, so it will be overlapping. Blue line will be overlap with the red line. Now, if there are some salt will be in the samples, now here you can see some interference by voltage. So the blue line which we already set, and once the voltage reached till 5000 voltage. So now current is the voltage not going more than five five thousand because there will be some salt will be there and then it is interfering. You can see another like how I have run will be looks now here is also you can see the voltage not reaching till four thousands means now we have to clean up those samples before isolating focusing or what you can say first dimension. Okay, so after 
the separation has been performed in the first dimension, we have to prepare our proteins for the separation in the second dimension. So this preparatory step is actually the step where we do equilibration. So if we equilibrate our proteins for their separation in second dimension. So what we do is, as we've already studied the lectures, we have two equilibration solutions and we incubate our strip with both the solutions. So first we will take out our strip after IPG has been performed. We'll add equilibration solution one. So the only difference between equilibration solution one and two is that equilibration solution one has DTT and equilibration solution two has IAA. So the aim here is to denature the disulfide bonds so that proteins are separated properly. So DTT will cleave the disulfide bonds and IAA will add a methyl group preventing any denaturation of the disulfide bonds. So we've already added equilibration solution one. Now we are putting on our strip onto the solution. We again move it a little to ensure that it has equilibrated properly with the solution. Usually we do this incubation for 15 minutes and then once the equilibration has been done with solution one, we subject the strip to equilibration with equilibration solution two. So we will then take our equilibration solution two, we'll add in another lane of the tray. I think there were some technical glitches and there was a time lag. We apologize for the same and we will repeat the demo after the equilibration part. So after the equilibration has been done, what we do is we take the strip and we put it in the SDS page plate and on top of it we add agarose solution. It's a sealing solution so that our strip is not disturbed in this uh, for separation in the second dimension. Now we have kept our plate in the electrophoretic cassette. We have packed it. We've also added some dummy balance plates. So after our cassette has been assembled, we will keep the cassette in the electrophoretic unit. As you can all see, the size of these SDS pages plates is quite big as compared to our regular size SDS page plates. And so is the size of the electrophoretic unit. So we have taken the unit and we, we, have, we have taken the cassette and kept in the electrophoretic unit. We'll add the buffer and then we'll start the run. So the separation in second dimension again takes two to three hours and after the proteins have been separated, we, scan, we first stain the gel using Kumasi blue staining solution, we de-stain it and then we scan for further annotation. So we'll now show you how to scan a gel. We have a one dimensional small gel, SDS page gel. And we'll show you how is that scanned using a tab scan software. So this is the gel that we are going to scan. So these are 1D gels which we already run. Now we are going to scan this gel by using our lab scanner. 
so here you can see the like procedure how we are going to scan now so when you are putting the gel just ensure there should be no there should be no air bubble between the gel and the glass plate otherwise it will be reflecting in the image i think we can show it from the beginning because um, okay. again sorry there was a technical glitch because of which you can you could not see the first few steps so it's pretty simple we'll close the window lab spec we'll open it again so it's a it's a software and which we used to analyze or to the scanner gel images this is a software so first we always check what settings are there so usually we keep uh, transparent mode sometimes we also scan western blot um, membrane for that we change the mode to reflective mode but in this case we will keep it transparent mode itself first what the instrument does is it does a preview scan so it scans the entire area the entire surface so first is this uh, preview scan that is happening and after this the main scan happens So as you can see, it has scanned the entire area. Now we select only the area where our gel is actually placed. So these are simple some crop and move tools which we'll use to select this particular area where our gel is kept. We'll just adjust its uh, length and height of the box which we are going to then scan. So this has been selected, and now we'll hit the scan button. You click OK, and now the software will scan only this particular area that has been selected. So now you can see the gel has been scanned. Now some of you would not like the current uh, contrast, so we can actually do that. We can change the contrast as well. so we can um, actually so this is how we have changed the contrast you can see right the bands are more bright now they are more sharp so further we can uh, then just save this image we'll click on file save as and we'll save in the tiff format and this image we can then later use for any annotation or any comparison so once we scan the like one d gels and i will just show how to like looks a uh, 2d gel this is a scanned image of a 2d gel that we have already run before and this is how a good 2d gel looks like you can see there are a lot of spots there are a lot of protein uh, proteins are there So now once we have done the like all experiments like we having a 
control and the treatment and then we have run the different different gel like like so we have control we have run the three gel two d gel and then for treatment we have also run the three gels then we have to compare now there will like one gels around there will be 500 600 spots so we cannot manually match those spots like which are the down and which are the up and which having are more intense or less intense so basically for that we are using a different different software so like we having a mp7 software where we can upload those images then we can crop and then we can do the adjusting contrast adjusting and then we can match those cells so just i will show you like how we there is a how it looks Now here you can see, so I already uploaded three, three gels. So here you can see that there are C1, C2, C3. So basically these are the control cell and these are the treatment gels. And these are the spots which is like, you can see outlined by the software. So these are the spots. So here you can compare the different different gels and then which are the intensity. If you want to see like how the spots looks, the 3D view of those spots, you can also you click on the specific spots. And then just go. You can click. I will open this up here again. So uh, I'll just minimize the other windows. Now here you can see these are the like three gels and then you can see there are some spots here are visible and here in the same gels you can see. Now if you want to compare those spots, just click on the spot. Then go to report. So you can see that the corresponding spots in all gels here you can see. 
how it is visible in other gels also so where the first gels where the intensity was more here you can see the like clear the spots and in another gels here you can see in there some gels where it is not like present here you can see there is no spots here so in this way you can also like confirm your spots like it is actually real spots or it is a just a false spot in like lead sometimes like here you can see this region this is not a like actual real spots so when you are doing the analysis you have to go manually each and every spot and then remove those spots like if you click there and then go into edit then you can remove those spots So in this way, you can remove those spots, and you can also make those spots, and then you can do your analysis. All right. So you got the glimpse of the different steps involved in the process. Uh, of course, you know the actual experiment takes a much longer duration, and it needs a lot more, you know, uh, meticulous effort. Uh, and in fact, scanning what we showed you for uh, SDS page gel, or not for the 2D gel. So in the 2D gel, you should see the spots, not the bands. Uh, but the analysis was shown to you for the 2D gels. What you may realize that you know when you are analyzing 2D gels, uh, if you have many replicates, uh, you will start seeing you know that you know how much artifact the gels have, running artifact, the sample artifacts, overall you know which will affect your analysis. And then to find out something which is very much significant from a stats point of view, you'll have a really hard time. So despite all your efforts, you may end up only getting you know 10, 15 proteins, which are hardly significant from the control to the test conditions. And those are the proteins of interest which you'd like to take forward for identifying that what those proteins are, right? Uh, but you know to overcome some of the limitations of 2D gels, uh, which is kind of you know all this uh, artifact which we just talked. Uh, a new method can be employed, which is dye based methods, differential electrophoresis method, uh, which you have already learned in the module by now. But now, what you uh, in the same continuation of the live session in the next week, we'll show you how you can do the labeling of the sample using uh, different type of cyanine dyes, uh, and then in which way you can do the multiplexer experiments, how you can scan those images, and some sort of you know the key contrasting uh, you know pros and cons of using 2D gel based method versus uh, to the dye gel uh, based methods so those kind of you know discussion we will have so uh, i hope that you know you got at least much more confident uh, feel of doing the entire gel based proteomics workflow by now uh, from attending the uh, lecture sessions on the videos as well as the live session looking at in the lab however if you still have any query something is not clear to you beyond assignments something which you think you can take forward for your own research something for your lab skills please do feel free to talk to us uh, post your query or send uh, send me an email. We'll be happy to you know, reply back to you. Uh, but do join us the next week again when we will have a live session uh, talking to you about the DICE technology. Till then, thank you very much. <laughs>